Today I have this bowl of deer fat from the last year that I hunted and we're going to talk today about rendering fat. There's a lot of different fats that you can use in tanning but most of them are animal fats and all of those need to be rendered. Rendering is the process of cooking the fat out of the protein whatever. I think of it as like there's protein sacs like little thin membranes that hold the fat and you want to cook the fat out of those and get the pure cooked fat. Today we're going to cover this very briefly, but in the future I'm going to do some kind of more in-depth video on rendering fat for eating, because that's a whole nother deal. In the case of tanning, the fat quality does not have to be very high, and so it's just much easier. There's a lot less to talk about. Step one, reduce the fat into small pieces. This is much easier if the fat is cold. Don't try to cut warm fat if you don't have to because it's no fun. You can see that this fat is not very clean. There's little bits of meat. There's quite a bit of blood. I don't care. It's for tanning, not for eating. It'll be fine. I don't want big chunks of meat in there or lots and lots of blood. But it doesn't have to be super clean for this purpose. The smaller you cut the fat, the faster it will render. So I'm going to go across it again this way. Now this fat is particularly easy to cut because it's deer fat, which is one of the hardest, most wax-like fats. And it's pretty cold. It's actually been out of the fridge for a little while here. Um, but it's still, that stuff just, it's so saturated and so hard that you can actually dip candles out of it as long as it's not, you know, they don't get really warm. And it will cool in your mouth like at 98.6 degrees and stick to your teeth and your tongue and stuff. That's how high the cooling temperature is for deer fat. Now that makes it really useful. Now to say it's used in tanning is, is kind of a misnomer because it's really it's used for finishing and conditioning leather. But when you want a stiff leather, you should use mostly a stiff fat, and there's no stiffer fat that I know of than deer fat. A grinder also works very well for this. This fat's kind of funky because it's been in the fridge for too long, so I'm not gonna put it in my grinder. And also cleaning up after the grinder is not worth it for this small amount of fat. Now if you're rendering fat to eat, it's more important to get it, the whole process done more quickly and not have the fat cooking for a really long time. So it's better to cut the fat really small or even run it through a grinder. Again, for use with leather, it's just not as important. So I don't really have to cut this that small. I'm just cutting as small as it's you know pretty easy to cut. But you don't want to throw in big chunks like this or just cut this into you know really large pieces or something like that. So I'm just gonna keep this on a very low heat and cook it for a long time. Some people will add water. Uh, the water is really just to keep the fat from burning when you're first getting the rendering started. At least I think that's why people use it. That's why I've used it. But I'm gonna just leave it on low and use this. So this is a heat spreader and it'll keep uh, the bottom of the pan from scorching. I'm in no hurry. I want to take this process nice and slow. Again, it doesn't matter too much what we do with this in terms of quality, but I don't want to burn it and I don't want to cook it really fast. I want to take the whole process fairly slow. So we'll revisit this in a little while. We may not even finish it until tomorrow. All right, this has been simmering away for quite a few hours. These little bits here are called cracklins. Eventually those will be mostly protein. You can see that some of them, like these white ones, still have um, fat in them. So I'm going to cook this a little bit longer to get more of that out. If I were making this for eating, I would definitely pour this off now. I probably would have poured it off already once to get the purest um, oil. But for tanning again, we can just kind of let it go um, a little bit longer, pour it off, kind of squeeze it out and probably call it good. Maybe cook it one more time, but it's doing good. Everything looks good. All right, it's morning. I took off last night, so I let this cool and just started it back again this morning. You can see that it's sizzling. 
That's because there's water in here. And remember that I said the fat is contained in little protein sacs. I don't actually know that. I, that's just how I think of it. So like thin membranes of protein. So if you fry a piece of bacon, the meat part doesn't shrink as much, but the fat part doesn't disappear completely. Some of the fat melts out of it, but you still have, you know, the basic structure of whatever was holding the fat. So that's what's happening here. But if you take that to an extreme, what do you end up with? Eventually these are gonna, all the fat's gonna leave these and they're gonna turn into these crispy uh, fried brown things. Now, if you want the very best eating quality fat, you don't actually want any of that kind of toasted fried meat type of flavor in there. With industrial fat like this for preparing leather, it's less important. You can have a little bit of it, but you obviously don't want too much, right? So you don't want to fry, I don't want to fry these to the point where they're really crispy and brown and the fat smells like, you know, fried meat basically, because then you're going to walk around with fried meat smelling leather. So pretty soon here, I'm going to pour this off to get the fat that's on there now. And then I can squeeze these because a lot of these things are full of liquefied fat. And if I squeeze them hard enough, most of the fat will come out. And that's why you use something like a lard press, which I don't have. So I'll probably just twist this up in a cloth. Now there's another important factor here, which is that all the moisture is not out of here because, you know, the proteins that hold the fats, these, you know, protein membranes need water in order to function, right? So they contain a certain amount of water and that water has not been cooked off yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain this off. We may or may not put this back on to cook. I think once I squeeze it, I'll probably just end up feeding it to the chickens because there's not gonna be a ton of fat left in there. And then we're gonna cook it further to get rid of the residual water. And that's important to do as well. So here's what's left. These are called cracklins. Now, if I cook this longer, I could get more out, but what, you know, I mean, I'm gonna get maybe, probably not even a quarter cup of fat out of what's left here. You know, this is clean, high quality food for my chickens. All right, what we have here is mostly fat. You can see it's a little bit yellow, uh, discolored. That's from, you know, probably the blood that was in there. And that's why, you know, if you're making food quality fat, you want to use super clean fat. There's also water in here though, not a lot, but enough to matter. Any water in fat will cause it to go off more quickly. It'll cause it to go rancid more quickly. Again, for this kind of industrial use, it doesn't matter so much, but I still would prefer to get all of the water out. So we're gonna do that now. So I don't know if you can see, but there's small bubbles in there rising up to the surface and that's the water cooking off. So it's easy to get this wrong because if you're not paying attention, it'll get to the point where there's no more bubbles and you think the oil isn't even hot, but it's actually getting extremely hot and eventually it'll you know catch on fire, but it also degrades and burns the oil. So you just wanna watch it until this bubbling stops. And I like to do that at a moderate heat. The thing is that oil, you know, water only gets so hot and then it turns into steam. It's like, what is it, 212 degrees, I think, something like that. But oil will just keep getting hotter and hotter. So right now I'm going to turn this down a little bit and just keep an eye on it until those bubbles stop. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but there's smoke coming off of this. And that's, you know, a lot hotter than I want it. I don't want any smoke. But the thing is with oil, you can't tell how hot it is really without a you know thermometer. So I'm gonna turn this down more and just let it cook slowly for a while until we're seeing very few or no bubbles. One last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this fat cool off. It's actually, it's just really hard to judge how hot it is. It's still smoking lightly. Um, I prefer it never smoked at all in the first place. But again, it's just really difficult to judge. So a canning jar can easily withstand boiling water and everyone who cans and uses these jars a lot knows that, but it will not withstand this at, you know, 420 degrees or whatever it is. In fact, let's find out what it is. 260, 280. Looks like it's slowing down around 300 degrees. So yeah, about 300 degrees. 
Right now I prefer that it was maybe more like 200 degrees or down. And I've done this several times where I for either forget or I just don't know how hot it is. Pour it in the jar, the jar cracks. Big mess. I'm gonna fill this way to the top. If you don't leave any air in the top, it will actually keep better. And since this is hot, if I seal it right now, no air will be trapped in there. And it'll actually seal itself just like hot packing jelly. It'll form a vacuum seal. All right, that's it. Uh, this will keep for, for tanning purposes, it'll keep for many years. For eating purposes, I wouldn't want to keep it much more than a year, but it depends on the type of fat and how you store it. But for tanning, I've used a lot of old fat that was pretty rancid smelling, and it doesn't make the hide smell rancid, and it doesn't seem to affect the hide negatively in any way. So I could, you know, I would use this for tanning for probably five years. So that is going to be just about all you need to know to render pretty much any animal fat and store it for later use. Eventually, of course, we'll be talking about using this in tanning or more appropriately termed dressing, uh, the dressing and finishing of leather and also the maintenance of leather. And also just about fats in general and the different qualities of different types of fats and oils, drying oils, non-drying oils, saturated, unsaturated, animal, vegetable. and all those different properties because if we understand those different properties that allows us to kind of riff off what we have or choose the right fat for the job and exploit those properties to you know the best advantage and that's kind of like what i'm all about is just kind of understanding resources in general and seeing the world as a, a landscape of resources or as i say a resource scape where you kind of understand all these properties of different materials and how you can like put them together into this alchemy of creating useful things. So uh, yeah, more on all that in the future. And that's it.